Hey, how's it going? Hi. What have we got here? Um, I've got a couple of notes to offer you. Uh, first off is a bison star note, and I also have two consecutive chief notes. Oh, sweet. The old school large paper money of the United States. This is when we actually made pretty money. And now they just put dead presidents and old guys on it. <laughs> I'm here today to sell some really cool and rare old US paper currency. I'm selling the notes to free up some cash and maybe put the money into another investment. I'm a pretty passionate collector. I've been collecting ever since I was a little kid. These are in incredible shape, too. So where'd you get these things? Uh, I picked them up at a trade show uh, out east. So these are um, right around 1901-ish? Uh, this one is uh, from 1901, and this is from 1899. Okay. Right around when these were printed, there were so many people in rural America, they were never going to be able to get to a museum somewhere and see fine art. So the idea was, let's start putting artful things on the money so people in rural areas could appreciate great American art. Like, you look at this bill right here. You got Lady Columbia. You know, this is a great American Indian chief. You have Lewis and Clark. We have, you know, American bison on it. I mean, it was big, it was bold, it was just pretty. So much more color, too, you know. Everything about it's just cool. Yeah. It was really a drawn-out process. They used to have real artists who made the money, and it was really hard to counterfeit. One engraver engraved the portrait, a separate engraver would engrave the background of the front, and a third engraver would do the back of the bill. So if someone was going to counterfeit the bill, he'd have to be the world's greatest engraver because he'd have to do three different styles. Really? Yeah. Um, the bison I rarely get, and uh, this one's a star note, which means the printing press screws up somehow or the other, and they got to you know, stop the whole thing, fix what's wrong, and start over again. First bill always has a star. And to my understanding, uh, you know, star notes are considerably rarer than regular issues. In general, if they have a star, they're always worth more money. Uh, these I've had over the years, but I have never had, like, two perfect ones, though. How many are you looking to get out of them? I'm asking 15000 for the uh, pair of Chiefs and okay. 15000 for the Bison, so basically 30000 for all three notes. Okay. I've seen these notes before. I just uh, never seen them in this kind of shape, so I sort of need a little help with the price. Okay. You know, it's not that I don't trust you. I just don't trust you. <laughs> I'll be right back. Let me, I'm going to give someone a call. I'm interested in hearing a second professional opinion. I'm very confident that he will agree with me. Well, what do we have here today? Paper money. Well, these are pretty cool, Rick. These are part of the Wild Wild West theme. They're considered to be America's greatest currency designs of all time. Uh, the chief, actually, was part of the Sioux tribe. However, whomever did the engraving, he used a Pawnee headdress. Okay. Little, little fun fact there for you. The interesting part about the chief notes, it's unusual to see a consecutive pair. The government will make these in sheets of four, cut them up, and then put them in packs of hundreds. So it's very unusual to find two consecutive. They're in incredible condition. I mean, those are both graded 65, which is um, damn near as high as you can get, so. So I guess you're, you kind of want to know the value? Um, yeah, he wants 30,000 total. Um, okay. The collectability of the bison star is going to be a little on a narrow field. Okay. I would put this is a retail value of probably 10 to 11 grand. Okay. Uh, the chief notes are very okay. collectible, very easy to sell. I would say 99% of collectors want one. So I'd say on a retail level, you're looking right around 14 to 15,000. So you're essentially looking at 25 to $26,000. Thanks, right. man. I appreciate it. See you soon. Take care. Good Thank luck. You. All right. <sighs> okay, so you started at 15 on that one, 15 on that one. This right here, I'll go 8,000 on. It might sit for a while. These, on the other hand, I'll be honest with you, they'll sell quickly. So take eleven thousand for these. I, I think we're much closer on the on the two chief notes than we would be on that one. Well, how much closer are we? I can do the pair for twelve thousand. My best is uh, ten five for the bison. Um. <sighs> okay. Would you do eighty five hundred on the star note? No, I can't. All right. I'm not gonna buy that one, but I'm gonna buy these for 12,000 bucks. Deal? Deal. Sweet. Thank All you. right. Um, grab that, meet me over there. All right, thank you. All right. Pretty money, and I'll make a quick buck. So this is it, this is where they filmed Star Wars. Elstree Studios, 1976, George Lucas does Star Wars here, and right behind us, the okay. George Lucas stage. All right, you having a religious moment right now? Oh, absolutely. This is like, you know, I don't want to go to heaven. I want to go to Elstree Studios. My friend, he's got some pieces that I haven't even seen, so I think you're going to want to see this stuff. OK, where's it at? So it's right through here. 
Jason, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Nice to see you. Cheers. Good, good. Jason, I'd like you to meet Rick Harrison. Hi How's there. How's it going? Nice to meet you. Jason is part of the uh, Kurtz Joiner Archive. The what? Archives. Gary Kurtz was the producer of Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back. Jason was his partner and best friend. So they formed the Kurtz Joiner Archive, and oh. they preserve Star Wars history and movie history. And Jason's not only an archivist, he's a historian and a collector, and he knows all about Star Wars. Oh, okay, that's cool. Thank you. So what do we have here? I brought a few things along to show you. I have pulled out a couple of bits that we could spare, but I've also brought out some of the more unusual things that the public haven't really seen. And if I do sell, that will help pay for some of the restoration projects that we're doing. I've never seen anything like this. This is one of the movie posters that was signed just before they released the film, and Gary Kurtz went round to the cast and asked them to sign uh, the poster individually. So it's all okay. been signed by everyone. So Tom Jung was an artist. Uh, he ended up doing this artwork. If you take a look, you've got Princess Leia, Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader, the droids. But what's great about this poster, so look at the credited cast, OK? George Lucas, Alec Guinness, Peter Cushing, Mark Hamill, Harrison Ford, Carrie Fisher. Guess what? They're all on it. This is a true masterpiece, Rick, and it's really almost a one of a kind. You're really not going to see this. That's pretty crazy. And what is that? That is the necklace that Carrie Fisher wore at the end ceremony of Star Wars. When you see them getting the medals, she wore that necklace. Oh, wow. Yeah. We found this in a box in Gary's archive, and uh, it'd been sitting there for years. It's made of silver. When I think of Princess Leia, I think of this role right at the end of Star Wars with her hair up, that beautiful necklace around her neck. It is pretty iconic. Um, what's in the box? Yeah, Steve, what is in the box, please? Steve, Steve <laughs> asked me to bring a few more interesting things along from the archive. I think you all like props, so this is quite interesting. This is the medal oh. from the end of Star Wars oh my goodness. that Han Solo and Mark Hamill yeah. was given, as you can see. So can we recreate that? <laughs> well, I'm, I think Rick, I am you, not you, Princess Leia. I'm you, not putting it do, on you. <laughs> can he try it on? Yeah, yeah, he can try it on. There you go. Oh no, can you? <laughs> Thank you. And there you go. So this is what <laughs> in the movie he was able to wear. This there was only two of them, and Chewbacca didn't get one. This is like a highlight of your life, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. Take it off before something happens. I'm good. I'm going to just zip this up and okay. walk away. <laughs> Take it off. <laughs> so what else is in the box? We have here Luke Skywalker's lightsaber from Return of the Jedi, weapon of a more civilized age. This is an aluminum original. How did they make them light up? That was done. It wasn't lasers. <laughs> <laughs> they put in a rod, and uh, it's a 3M reflective material. So when the light shines on it, it reflects back, and then they animate in the, the color afterwards. Lou Skywalker's lightsaber, pretty incredible. It is. So I'm assuming you left the best for last? I'm afraid so. OK, so you've seen some props. Now I'm going to show you something that's not a prop. <laughs> OK, so what we have here is... Whoa. George Lucas's original handwritten Whoa. draft of Star Wars, the script. I've got chills. That's amazing. Saga one, the Star Wars. That's the entire script. Yep. George Lucas would sit down, hand write the story, but then he would type in sections of the story that he changed and staple them over the top. You can see here that they're changing the dialogue, they're right. cutting scenes out, and they're adding information. But some of the early names, we see Jawa, we, uh, the Moss Eisley spaceport is where we meet Han Solo and Chewbacca. So it's pretty amazing here as we just see things that are changed and altered. This is something that I never could imagine existing. We're very proud to have this in the archive. Absolutely. That has to be worth at least $5 million. So I'm assuming this is going to go to a museum on loan or something? Our plan is to open a museum ourselves so that people can actually see it. And uh, obviously, something like that wouldn't be for sale. There are some things that we do sell from time to time. Um, the poster is something I would consider letting go. OK. What do you think the poster's worth? This is the most desirable Star Wars poster you could possibly own. Main cast, all signed by their names. Never even seen that before. Um, something like this. I'd put the value $50,000 on this, Rick. OK, so if I retailed it after I got it framed and everything, I should be able to get 50 grand. 
Absolutely. Okay. I'll give you 25. It's a significant offer. I've got things we would like to preserve, which the money would be useful for. I, I, I'd let it go for 35. Would you do 33? Do it 34 and you got yourself a deal. Split me down the middle. You got a deal. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'll put it in my gallery. I imagine it will sell quickly. I know this trip was more for you than it was for me, but am I becoming a little bit of a Star Wars fan? Just geeking out a little bit? It worked. <laughs> the force has worked. <laughs> Jason, thank you for everything. Thank you. And thank you to the uh, Kurtz Joyner Archive right. for everything. Thanks for helping us. We really appreciate it. All right. Thanks again, Doug. Thanks, Jason. I can't wait to tell the guys about this. What do we got here? What I've got is a 1861 Confederate coin that was from the shipwreck the SS Republic. Oh, I do love coins. The SS Republic. Yeah, I know, I know all about these. Um, it's really cool, because he was actually a cabin boy on the show. Oh, was he? <laughs> What's up with all the old jokes, Rick? You're old. Not that old. Well, my Confederate half dollar and was part of the shipwreck that they found in 2003. I'm a coin collector, and I've had it for a number of years. My interest is getting as much money as I can, but I like to have at least $800. Really interesting coin. These got a great history. Basically what happened was, is back in the day, there was a mint in New Orleans. The US government's minting coins down there, and all of a sudden a war breaks out. The rebels take over the mint and proceeded to continue making coins. England didn't want to sell the South guns. They didn't want to take paper money. They didn't want to take bonds. They didn't want to take anything like that. They wanted hard money, gold or silver, because they thought the South might lose. So that's why they needed these coins. When the Civil War was finally over, the Union shipped all the coins made at the New Orleans Mint up to New York so they could be inventoried. And when the South needed money for reconstruction efforts, they sent the coins back down to New Orleans on the USS Republic. When the USS Republic was built, it was a revolutionary design. Yeah, this was literally one of the most high-tech ships in the world. It was just sort of a coincidence that these Confederate coins were going back down to New Orleans. They got caught up in a hurricane. The ship just got so beat up, there was no saving it, and it went down. But I believe they discovered it in 2003, started bringing the items up in 2005. When they brought them up, they all had damage, and this thing was in salt water for a long time, and there's some corrosion on the coin. Well, and I agree with you, but to me, that's what gives it prominence, is the fact that it has that salt water interaction effect, so you know for sure that well, it was buried at sea. How much do you want for it? Well, I've seen them go on the internet anywhere from 1500 to 2500 OK. That they go for. Do you mind me asking what you paid for it? I paid uh, right at 600 I've seen these go for like four or 500 bucks. Um, the problem was is there was 57,000 of them, I believe, recovered. I can pay you 400 bucks for the coin. That's what it's worth. How about 425 No. 400 is my best offer. And the reason I'm going that high is they sell quick. Well, you really hurt me. You know, my wife spends more than that at the casino. <laughs> You've got a deal. All right, walk right over here and I'll write you up. I'm OK with only making $100 off this coin. All I have to do is put it out in the showcase, and my work is done. Easy money. All right, what do we have here? I have a mad comic, number one, that I'd like you to take a look at. That's pretty damn cool. I was hoping you'd think that. Have you ever read it? Comic books aren't really my thing. I was more interested in the mad art. It's cool. I mean, it's just really full of that, you know, preteen boy silly humor. Yeah. I can't believe you didn't read this. I'm not a boy, so uh, maybe that explains it. <laughs> <laughs> I am selling this Mad Comic issue number one because it was purchased as part of a collection and the comic itself was not what I was really interested in. I'm hoping to get $2,500 for this comic. I would use that money to purchase uh, other pieces of art that I'm interested in. This is extremely cool. Rarely am I in awe of something. I had a subscription to Mad Magazine when I was a kid, and this is Mad Comic. This isn't even Mad Magazine. It's neat that it's a comic, because eventually it turned into a magazine format, because in the 50s, uh, the government was, like, getting all weird about comic books and, you know, that they were screwing up kids' minds. Magazines weren't scrutinized the way comics were. Exactly. When it was first released, Mad was more than a comic book. It was a satire on current events. It wasn't afraid to get really close to the edge, just like today.
I'm assuming you want to sell this. Yes. How much you want for it? I'm asking twenty-five hundred. Okay. I have no idea if that's a good price. Um, I know they go for good money. I know. Right, um, and I feel like this is in very good condition. And if you're a mad collector, you want to have mad number one. I actually have a friend who grades these things. Do you mind if I call him and get him down here? No, that sounds great. Okay. Hang out a few minutes. I'll be right back. I'm fine with an expert coming in because I'm just as curious to find out what the grade of this particular comic would be. Wow. Oh. oh. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, well, it's mad comic. That's the weird thing. I, uh, I've never seen one this old. At issue 23, they become the magazine. They were trying to get away from the comics code. So the comic book code authority, was that like a government regulation or? Yeah, Dr. Frederick Wortham, he was on this witch hunt saying that comic books were destroying America's youth. Wortham had this huge Senate hearing and the Comics Code Authority got instituted. The publisher of Mad changed it to a magazine format so they could skirt the Comics Code Authority. So what do you think? Oh, it's very nice. Got some fingerprints on the back. And the interior front cover also. Cover's a little bit tanning. You have some creases here along the spine. A little tanning on the pages looks a little cream. Here, let me take a look at that black. It's a beautiful looking book. So grade-wise, it's a... On a scale of one to 10, it's around a 6.5 or a seven. Well, I mean, what do you think it's worth? I would put the value at about $2,000. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Anytime, Rick. This would be a great buy for the shop if Rick can get this for a good price. It'll sell quickly. So what's your best price? $2,000. Uh, well, there's nothing in it for me at $2,000. I have to make money off it. OK. So let me give you $1,300 for it. I would say $1,800. There's no money in it for me, then. I can give you $1,400. Anything after that, it doesn't make sense. The lowest I can go is 1500 If you change your mind, give me a call. OK. Thanks. Thank you very much. I wasn't able to sell the comic today, but I will go home. I'll put it online. And I'm confident that I will get a price of $1,500 or better. What do you have here? I got a really cool movie poster. All right, you mind if I open it up? No, take a look. Marilyn Monroe, Clark Gable, The Misfits. Yeah. This movie was actually written for Marilyn Monroe, like a Valentine's Day gift, by her husband. I wish someone would write me a movie for a Valentine's <laughs> Day gift, but I guess I'm not as pretty as Marilyn Monroe. No, probably not. <laughs> I'm looking to sell my 1961 Misfits poster. It's Marilyn Monroe and Clark Gable's last film, and I think it's a really collectible poster. I got it from another collector, and I've had this poster about six or seven years. I'm hoping to get $1,200 for my Misfits poster, but I'll certainly listen to any reasonable offer. OK, this is pretty cool. At the time, it was the most expensive black and white movie ever made at $4 million. And an old classic movie about the West not being the West anymore and the decline of the Cowboys, I guess. Pretty much, but this was Marilyn Monroe's last film before she died, and it was also Clark Gable's last film. So they say it's a cursed movie. It does seem to have a little bit of a curse to it. Uh, Clark Gable had a heart attack the day after the movie wrapped. Then, as we know, Marilyn Monroe was struggling with drug addiction and alcoholism throughout the entire movie, and she passed away a year later. It is a really cool poster. You mind if I touch it a little? No, of course. Yeah, just looking at it, I can see these creases in there. And it does have some wrinkling right here and what looks maybe to be a tape stain or something. I'm not sure. Other than that, it's just got these holes in it where it was hung up. And I mean, a lot of time you'd expect to see that. All right, well, how much are you looking to get for it? Uh, I think I'd like to get $1,200. OK. Um, I actually have no idea what this is worth. This movie is just a couple years before my time, you know? It is Marilyn Monroe and Clark Gable, and anything with Marilyn Monroe seems to just hold its value pretty good. So I'd like to get someone to come down and take a look at it, and then we can talk maybe about a price after he gives me some more information on it. OK, great. Give me just a few minutes, and uh, I'll be right back. OK, thank you. 
I'm confident that the expert will agree with my assessment of $1,200 because I have seen him go for $1,500 in the market. Hey, Andrew. Hey, chum. Hello. Hi. So, this is what I called you down about, the Misfits movie poster from 1961. Great. This is a great piece. You got two of the biggest names in film, Clark Gable and Marilyn Monroe, and this is their last film. It was actually released posthumously. Gable died before the film came out. And Marilyn Monroe, the starlet that she was, is very valuable stuff, even still. You have some concerns about its uh, condition, maybe? Yeah, or... I mean, there's some wrinkling going on, and I don't know what that is right there. I was thinking maybe a tape stain or mm -hmm. something. I mean, it looks authentic, and you do want to see something 60 plus years old, you want to see some of that, right? Yeah. And uh, this format being what looks to be the, the 27 by 41 format was issued folded. So you wouldn't want to see a world release of this. This is a tape stain, almost certainly. Looks like at one point the tape contacted the Didn't center of the image. Didn't even notice that one. Yeah. Beyond the tape stains, which are, these are kind of significant, there is a fair amount of acid burn, let's call it, in the image. That actually should be the same color as the whole background. And that's just from aging? Yeah, or probably what it was pinned up to. Oh. What it was in contact with, maybe as yes. you know, being stored. But it's authentic, it's a wonderful piece. I, I think it you know, would be an easy sell if you get it for the right price. Well, how much do you think it's worth? Well, I mean, recently, it, it's kind of gained value pretty quickly, even in the last couple of years. This one, however, uh, being in the condition that it's in, I think as it sits, 300. All right, well, thanks for coming down. Happy to, anytime. Good luck. All right, not exactly what you're asking for, but it's still got some value to it. I was kind of hoping for that 1,200. You know, it is Marilyn Monroe and Clark Gable, come on. It is, and I mean, with everything that I've learned today, I still do want it, but I'd be a buyer at like 200, which is a lot less than you're asking for. <laughs> I was started at 1,200. I could understand 1,000 even. Well, just because you want a certain price for something doesn't mean I can pay for that. If he would have came in here and told me this was worth, you know, 16, 700 bucks, I would have been happy to pay you 1,000, 1,100 bucks for it to jump up a dime, So you know? what's the best we can really do on it? Well, if he's telling me it's worth 300, 200, it really is my best. Okay, I mean, I don't want to come out empty-handed here. <laughs> Deal at 200. All right, I'll tell you what. Just walk over to the counter right there. I'll leave the poster here, and we'll get you paid. OK. I only got $200 for the poster, but I guess, you know, my wife will be happy it's one less poster in the house. 